pizza. <laughs> now I say FNAF YouTuber with the biggest quotes imaginable, because I don't think Garrett here really wants to be known as one. But if I asked any one of you watching what you know this person for, you're more than likely going to respond with one of his FNAF videos. 5.1 million views. That's how many views How To Make Five Nights at Freddy's Not Scary has at the time I am recording this video. It's one of FNAF's earliest viral videos. And if you're watching me, there is an extremely good chance you have seen this video at some point during your life. The video is simple in nature. Just taking some gameplay clips from FNAF 1 and dubbing over them to make them a bit more humorous. However, underneath the surface, there is a whole rabbit hole regarding these videos. You probably wouldn't even think that'd be possible if you haven't been keeping up. But there's surprisingly a lot of content to cover when it comes to how to make Five Nights at Freddy's not scary. So strap in boys, today we're talking about the effects of viral videos on content creators, viral video clones, hating your own work, being trapped in a bubble, and whatever ended up happening to Garrett Williamson, the creator of one of FNAF's most viral videos. Garrett is a musician. I think that's pretty important to get out of the way right off the bat. Even from some of his earliest videos on his YouTube channel that date back more than 10 years, you can see him talk about some of his music projects. And I am Garrett Williamson, your research guide. So first off today, I just wanted to let everybody know that my album is on iTunes. Link in the description below and have fun listening to it. I really enjoyed doing it. Took a while to do. Pretty good though. Garrett also wanted to be a YouTuber at the time. This is something he would eventually decide not to pursue years later, but in the moment, his creative passions were both music and video creation. You'll notice I said first channel. That's because before How To Make Five Nights at Freddy's Not Scary, he was uploading all his content to a channel called GC Waves. The content here was a little sporadic, but the main thing that Garrett was uploading was a series called RTTTA, which stands for Random Things To Talk About. The title kinda says it all here. It was a series of videos in which Garrett talked about random things. These ranged from movies, to games, to literally anything. I mean, it's in the name. Fast forward to 2014, Garrett was still producing more episodes of RTTTA on GC Waves. However, when Five Nights at Freddy's started to hit the YouTube scene in August of 2014, Garrett decided he would throw his hat in the ring and make a video on FNAF. But he didn't just simply make an RTTTA video on FNAF. No. Instead, he decided to go a completely different direction that involved making a laser collection style comedy video, but with gameplay from FNAF. If you have no clue what the Laser Collection is, it's an old series of Flash animations that involved a collection of short jokes connected by TV Static. The idea of making a FNAF version of the Laser Collection is really smart, given that TV Static is a major aspect of FNAF. Garrett must have thought that this video idea wouldn't have fit on his main channel, so he decided to make the video and upload it to a different channel that he made back in 2012. And so, on August 27th, 2014, How to Make Five Nights at Freddy's Not Scary was uploaded. At first, it really didn't get that much traction, but over a pretty short period of time, the video started to blow up. Big. So yeah, within like the first week, it hit like 500 views. I was like, wow, well that's kind of a lot because this channel only had like 38 subscribers at that point. I remember just, I remember the, the amount of subscribers I had because my main channel was GC Waves, which had 400 subscribers and the top viewed video on there had 12,000 views. So 500 on this was like crazy. The next week it had like 10,000. I was like, whoa, okay couple weeks later, it was like a 200, 300,000 views. Crazy. By the end of the year, it had 5 million, 6 million views. It was nuts. This was the most views Garrett had ever gotten on a video. So with this newfound success, he had to find a way to keep the momentum going on this channel. He would upload a Sonic Adventure lip reading video a few months after, then continue the FNAF Not Scary series in November of 2014 when FNAF 2 dropped. This was pretty much the birth of Not Scary becoming a series rather than a standalone video. We got Among the Sleep Not Scary, Creepypasta Not Scary, Pokemon Go, etc. However, during all this, 
Garrett began to feel trapped in a bit of a content creation bubble. He got popular thanks to a viral video on a game he admittedly barely played or cared about, and his only good way to branch out from it was to cover other horror topics, which is something he didn't even really like. So after Creepypasta Not Scary, Garrett decided to move his flagship series from GC Waves to his now more popular channel. RTTTA was back, but unsurprisingly they got significantly less views than any of the other content on the channel. I can only imagine this was a huge motivation killer for Garrett. The Not Scary videos realistically took minimal effort compared to everything else he was doing, be it RTTTA or his music. So when FNAF 4 came out, instead of just doing a Not Scary video on it like the other three games, he decided to upload a quick shitpost video where he essentially made fun of all the people who wanted an actual FNAF 4 Not Scary. I put Five Nights at Freddy's in the title of this video, look at all the money you are throwing at your screen right now. Look at all of this money. I am making so much off of you cl clicking on this because of Five Nights at Freddy's. I put it in the title. Look at this. Look. Look at all these money grabbers. Look at all these. Woo! There was a catch though. If his RTTTA video on Wave Race could hit 20k views, he would make the video for real. The video, of course, hit that goal. And Garrett did indeed make How to Make FNAF 4 Not Scary. I'll talk about this a bit more when I go over all the videos, but this installment in the series is probably the funniest, because of how passive-aggressive it is towards the audience. Anyway, Garrett would continue to pursue the YouTube dream and continue uploading RTTTA videos alongside some music stuff. He did one final FNAF Not Scary for Sister Location, then only a few videos later announced that the Not Scary series was done and not coming back. Already clarified I'm done with that. Okay, but you didn't say you were done with Not Scary as a whole, so where's Bendy and the Oil Machine? You know, honestly, Mac, I, I think I'm done with Not Scary as a whole. The whole Spank series? The whole dadgum diddly darn YouTube series. <laughs> It was very clear at this point that Garrett did not like his Not Scary videos, and would rather pursue making other things. The channel after that point started to post less and less frequently, until it was pretty obvious that Garrett was done with YouTube, and was ready to move on to other passions he had. So that's a brief rundown of the history of Garrett Williamson and his YouTube career. But how do the FNAF Not Scary videos hold up today? Was he right to say these videos were some of his worst work? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty obvious. Guys, I don't really know what you expected me to say about these videos, but my take is the majority of these do not hold up in the slightest. Sure, I have nostalgia for these videos, but even that won't stop me from saying these have aged just about as well as the milk you forgot to put back in the fridge yesterday that's still sitting on the table. You should probably go and put that back in the fridge by the way. Before I dive into the first video though, there's something I gotta bring up regarding it. If you go back to watch this video now, you may notice that the audio quality is complete and utter garbage. <laughs> hey dude, just wanted to let you know the pizza's ready. I'm sorry, that time? The video was not always like this. If we take a trip to the Wayback Machine to view the video closer to when it came out, you'll notice a massive difference in audio quality. <laughs> hey dude, just wanted to let you know the pizza's ready. I'm sorry, bedtime? Hey my god, just hit me So what happened? Well, from what I can tell, one of the jokes in the video involves a song called Take Me Over by Tim White. A copyright claim was put on the video at some point because of this. So Garrett had to go back and mute the audio for this joke. I have no idea how, but I guess him doing this also completely messed up the audio for the entire video. So if you really want to rewatch this video again, I recommend just plopping the link into the Wayback Machine and watching it that way for the true FNAF Not Scary original experience. Anyway, the first two FNAF Not Scary videos are fairly similar, just being collections of very simple jokes that probably haven't aged the best. Not saying that they're controversial or anything, just that they're kind of not funny in the slightest. Mom, no, don't go. Mom, I love you. This is something Garrett himself realized much earlier than his audience, clearly, as the third and fourth entries in the series change up the format a lot compared to the first two. How to Make FNAF 3 Not Scary features some YouTuber cameos from Blasphemous HD and Jacksepticeye. All of you have succeeded at totally disappointing me, especially you, old bunny dude. Oh, you saying that because I'm purple? You're yellow, dude. Is that? Okay, shut up with that stupid joke. I can be whatever color I want to be. And today, it's purple. Dude, you're blue. I am purple! All of you probably know Jack, but for those who don't know Blasphemous HD, he's an old React YouTuber who did some FNAF stuff. 
If you know him for anything nowadays, it's probably that old clip where he said he wanted to bang Toy Chica. Legitimately fucking up right now. <laughs> she is such a bad bitch though. I will fuck the shit out of that robot, man. We'll be talking a bit about him more later, but for now, that's really all you need to know. The jokes in this one still aren't amazing, but the concept alone helps the video hold up a lot better than the first two. Garrett inserting himself into the series as a character talking to the animatronics through his computer is a really good idea, and allows for a more interesting video overall. Then we come to the FNAF 4 video. I teased it a bit earlier, but this is by far my favorite one of the bunch. You can really tell he didn't want to make this video thanks to the shitpost one he posted before it, and due to how passive aggressive it is in nature. But I think those things combined create a pretty funny video looking back at it. The use of Sammy Classic Sonic fans scream gets me every time, and the ending where everything goes all crazy is by far one of the best parts. Pizza! The joke is so old now, just stop. This is working out real nicely. Is this funny? Am I funny yet? Go to the dentist and fix your teeth. Oh boy. Freddy's gone super saiyan. And Chica's gone insane. Nope. What is going on? Are these enough pizza jokes? What the heck? Somebody better make a really good theory if you find this one. The universe is imploding. Oh my god. Now the sister location video is more in line with the first two, but it's not really interesting because of that. There's not really anything noteworthy about it other than it being the final FNAF Not Scary video from Garrett. And with that, the FNAF Not Scary saga wraps up. For what they were, they were pretty influential at the time, and even if they don't hold up the best, most people still probably have fond memories watching these videos back in the day. However, we're not done yet. With every successful video on the internet, there's bound to be some clones. And for FNAF Not Scary, there were clones galore. There's definitely a Star Wars joke I could make here, but sorry guys, I'm not a nerd. But yes, because of how big the original FNAF Not Scary became, multiple channels decided they would do their own versions. The most notable of these clones has to be Blasphemous HD. That's right, the guy I talked about earlier who cameoed in one of the actual FNAF Not Scary videos got on Garrett's radar thanks to his own version of how to make FNAF Not Scary. This video consists of random FNAF SFM animations with some interesting edits made to them. <laughs> I, I, like, I, you have to look at this guys, I don't even know. This video, posing itself as a sequel to Garrett's video and predating the FNAF 2 one, ended up getting a lot of views in its own right. Garrett even commented on the video saying, Ha 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 ha, I can't believe people are doing this stuff. Really entertaining to see your take on part 2, winky face. Blasphemous HD would end up making a whole lot more of these, including one for Security Breach that was only uploaded 9 days ago from the time I'm writing this. While Blasphemous HD is probably the most prominent clone, there are a couple that I think are important enough to bring up. B&B Films would upload How to Make Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator Not Scary, featuring Garrett Williamson, in January of 2018. Because Garrett features in this video, this is probably the closest thing to an official How to Make FNAF 6 Not Scary. B&B Films did a couple more after this one, including Ultimate Customite and Help Wanted, but would not continue making Not Scary videos past that point. Finally, there's Goron Guy 123 who really wouldn't be that noteworthy if it wasn't for the fact that he has three hours plus of FNAF Not Scary content on his channel that was compiled all into one video. This was probably the person most dedicated to the Not Scary genre, so for that I have to give them some props. The art of FNAF Not Scary clones has pretty much died off at this point, as the concept has been kind of completely run to the ground. But it's interesting to see a subculture of videos stem from one viral hit. Alright, so you're probably thinking we're gonna wrap up now, but nope, there's still more to talk about. Garrett on YouTube hasn't been too vocal about his thoughts on FNAF and FNAF Not Scary. There is a video of him watching every single one, but the commentary is pretty surface level from what I watched of it. If you want to know his real takes, we gotta take a trip over to his Twitter and search for every time he tweeted the word FNAF. Here are the best gems I could find. 
So, you don't want to make any more FNAF videos. Yes, good, FNAF is the bottom result. We're getting places, guys. Now let's get it off the result entirely. Just seeing the FNAF fan base, and I'm like, why bother with FNAF when you could be playing Honey Pop? FML, put FNAF in the title. Hashtag my five word success story. Considering how to make Five Nights at Freddy's not scary is one of the earlier FNAF vids, one of the first viral, and one of the biggest still, I think I'm the reason for the fan base of eight year olds. At Tails channel, make a FNAF not scary. Make sure it's stupid and geared towards eight year olds. Boom, money. How am I supposed to know if I'm right? What if I'm wrong? I can't tell you if FNAF Not Scary is made for kids or not. I seriously don't know if it counts. I'm at risk of being fined for $42,000? I'm terrified of uploading anything. I seriously am on the brink of fully retiring. Fix the FNAF Not Scary thumbnail so the FTC doesn't find me. Those last two are related to a COPPA scare that Garrett had regarding FNAF Not Scary. I guess he thought the video might have been flagged for kids or that he'd get fined or something, but the video is still up with comments to this day, so it never ended up getting flagged. I don't bring these tweets up to expose Garrett or anything, there's genuinely nothing here to get mad at. I bring these up because it shows his mindset at the time that he would be forever stuck in the shadow of FNAF Not Scary. That FNAF Not Scary would be all he was known for forever, and that he had already peaked with his online career. And you know what? You could argue that. But I think we should take a look at what Garrett's been up to today to see if the FNAF curse has really stuck with him all this time. Remember what I said about him being a musician earlier? Now that's important again, because as time went on, his main passion switched from YouTube to music completely. He has multiple albums, but he stated many times that his main dream is to become a video game music composer. So did he achieve it? Yes, actually. He's worked on music for games such as No Straight Roads and PUBG, and also done a whole lot of music for Scott the Waz, surprisingly. Garrett seems to be doing really good for himself and doing what he loves best, making music. You could argue he peaked with FNAF Not Scary, and in terms of views, you would probably be correct. But if you want to talk about living your best life, Garrett is currently doing that. I think this whole story is a good lesson about feeling trapped creatively. If you're not enjoying doing something, why even bother? Follow your most prominent passion in life and stop at nothing until you've made it. That's what Garrett did, and it's safe to say he's only going to keep moving up in the music world. Sure, he may have not handled the response to the Not Scary series in the best way possible. But life goes on, and you learn from your mistakes. If FNAF Not Scary did anything for Garrett, it helped him get his name out there, and make people aware of his music. Without it, who knows if he would have a big enough platform to even receive some of the opportunities he has. That's really all I gotta say on this topic, so I'll cut it here. Before I go though, we are on the home stretch for 200k subs, so if you've enjoyed this video or any other video I've made, please, please consider subscribing to find out when I upload more videos. I've been Aya, uh, yeah, and have a good one everybody.